my reading wrap up for September of 2016. I read eight books this month and they were in that introduction there. So if you want to skip straight to one, there is a timestamp in the description below as well as links to all the books I'm going to be reviewing today. As usual, I'm going to start out with kind of some announcements before I move in to talking about the books I read this month. So first of all, there were six people that did my new to booktube tag this month. I'm going to put all their names over here and I'm going to have links to their channels down below in case you guys want to say hey. It means a lot to me that that tag is still going strong. And I also want to let you guys know that in case you missed it, I was part of a live show over on Alley, the Little Librarian's channel just about a week ago. We did a live show discussion of Empire of Storm. A link will be down below. Now let's check in with my TBR for the month and see how I did on that. So in September I was attempting to do sequel September. I had six sequels on my TBR because I'm really behind in some of these series and I wanted to catch up. So out of the six I ended up reading a total of four of these and I am about a third through another of them that I just didn't finish this month. But I did read a total of eight books this month so let's get into the reviews. Everything that I read this month, I gave three stars or above, so it was a great reading month for me personally. I always love it when I end up liking everything or the majority of what I picked up. And as usual, I am going to start at the lower end of my rating scale and work my way up to the books that I enjoyed the most this month. But since the ratings are fairly even, this isn't going to be a very strictly ranked list. First up is The Shadow Hour by Melissa Gray, and this is the sequel to The Girl at Midnight. This is a young adult urban fantasy series about a girl who is an ordinary human that finds her kind of thrust into the middle of this war that is between these two different races. One race is human dragon hybrids and the other race are human bird hybrids. Our main character Echo, the human, finds herself tasked with trying to track down this legendary creature that myth says will stop the war. There's a lot of globe trotting and like clue hunting and then breaking into museums to find the next clue and stuff in this series so it's a very exciting series. With this sequel I was really pleased to see where the story started to go now because book one ended with a big thing happening and I thought book two really expanded on that. It kind of did up the stakes. It brings about a little bit more new information. There are more than one love triangle in this book and I kind of feel like that was wearing out its welcome at this point. This is also a really diverse series. The author is Latina, so is the main character, and we do have several LGBTQIA plus characters. Overall, I do enjoy this series, so I definitely am going to be reading the finale of this trilogy when it comes out next year. Next up, I read Unblemished by Sarah Ella, and I was sent this advanced reader's copy by the publisher in exchange for an honest review. This is a debut novel coming out on October 11th, and it is a young adult urban fantasy. Our main character, Eliana, lives in New York, and she was born with this birthmark on her face that she feels is very ugly. She has a low self-confidence as a result of it, but when her mother dies, she actually finds herself drawn into another world. She finds out that there are like parallel worlds that exist. She finds herself pulled into this epic battle between light and darkness and she learns that her birthmark is a mark of her strength and her role that she plays in this world. I did find that it was a little bit difficult for me to understand everything that was happening in this other fantasy world. There are a ton of characters and the characters move around a lot. There's a lot of action. There was a lot of information to process. That's not to say that's a bad thing because a fantasy world should be big. You should have a lot of characters with their own motivations. Another thing that took away my enjoyment of this own a little bit is I was just so mad at a couple of the characters almost throughout the entire book. So I wasn't convinced of some of the relationships and some of the bonds that she had with these characters. However, there is one character, Kai, who I think Sarah Ella wrote him brilliantly. He is a character that has a tragic past who isn't a jerk. You don't really know what his motivations are. When I was reading some scenes about him, I was just freaking out and texting Sarah Ella like, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to your characters? I am definitely going to be reading the second and third books in this trilogy because Sarah Ella is a great friend and I'm so proud of her. Next, I read The Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson which is book number two in the Remnant Chronicles, which is another YA fantasy series. It is about a princess who runs away on her wedding day, and the prince that she had this arranged marriage with, who she's never met, goes after her, and so does an assassin from another land. In book two, these characters' identities have been revealed, and Leah, the main character, is kind of struggling with her feelings towards both of these guys and how they have betrayed her. She doesn't know who she can trust. I really enjoyed how fierce Leah had become in this book, and I also really enjoyed getting to know the two male characters for who they really are, but a lot of time was spent in the same place doing the same thing. I feel like maybe not much was done or accomplished, but I had fun reading it anyway. 
Then I read Career of Evil by Robert Galbraith, which is a pseudonym for J.K. Rowling. This is the third book in her Cormoran Strike series, which is an adult detective series. Each book has a new mystery that our main character, Cormoran Strike, a private detective, is trying to solve. In this installment, his assistant, Robin, finds herself the target of a serial killer. It is pretty gruesome because it does deal with murders. I just really enjoyed that this time Rowling added the point of view of the killer while you still don't know the identity of them, but you did get to read through their eyes, which kind of upped the creep factor in my opinion. And I also really enjoyed that all three books, Rowling has written the grand reveal in a different way. Cormoran is actually a character with a disability. He is missing a leg and he does live with a prosthesis. And I really appreciate that about this series, portraying disability as something that doesn't hinder him, but is very, very much part of him. Next, I read Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in her newest Shadowhunters series called The Dark Artifices. This one follows all new characters, although if you have not read The Mortal Instruments or The Infernal Devices or The Shadowhunter Academy novellas, this one is going to spoil all of those things, but you don't have to have read them to understand this story. This is a young adult urban fantasy series, and in this new story, we are following two Shadowhunters, and they are trying to solve this string of murders that keeps happening in Los Angeles. I really enjoyed this book. I really love Emma as the main character. I think I like her better than Clary and Tessa because she's already in this world. She knows what she's doing. There's not that awkward period of trying to figure out who am I? What role do I play? I'm part of a magical world I didn't know about before. And I also really love the character of Mark. If you've read it, the stuff that happens at the end Yes, I love it. And also, Mark is a bisexual character. There is also a pretty prominent character, Christina, who is Latina. And I love the friendship between her and Emma. So great friendship, great romance, great family dynamic, and a good amount of diversity in this one. So I was really pleased. I did really enjoy this one. I'm definitely going to be continuing this series. Also at four stars, I finally read The Good Girls by Sarah Shepard, which is the sequel to The Perfectionist, which is a young adult mystery duology about five girls, all from different cliques in their high school who have all been bullied or harassed by the most popular guy in school and one day they come up with the perfect plan to murder him and then he ends up dead in the exact way that they planned except none of them did it. So they're trying to figure out who has done this and who is framing them. So I was extremely satisfied with this ending to the mystery because I had a theory that I was banking on from book one and I was just flying through the pages of this one trying to pick up little clues and see if I was right and the way that this ended I was very very happy with. As far as diversity in this one you do have a Korean main character and an Iranian main character. I am planning to do a series review on this one soon. And finally we are at my five star books. So the first of those is Illuminate by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a young adult science fiction novel set in space. It is about the survivors of a planet that was attacked and blown up and they've all escaped on these different spaceships and they're being pursued by the enemy. Their defense systems are down so they can't fight back and they're trying to make it to the closest like safety area which is six months of travel away. And while all of that is happening there is an illness that breaks out on board of one of these ships and then the artificial intelligence of the main ship goes haywire. So they're dealing with a lot of stuff and just trying to survive. And the story is completely told in found footage format. So there's like emails or video surveillance system. You get a lot of point of view from that artificial intelligence system. This is a reread for me. I reread it in preparation for Gemina, the sequel, which is coming out in October. And I read this last year, absolutely loved it. it. Ended up being one of the top 10 of my favorite books of last year. This is just a book that I really love. Like when I read it, I just get all fluttery and excited about it, I think it might be a favorite of all time. Cannot wait for the sequel. And finally, the last book I read this month, like everybody else did, was Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Mass, which is the fifth book in the Throne of Glass series. This is a young adult fantasy series, which now I believe is going to be classified as new adult. The series started out with the main character, Selena Sardothian, being imprisoned because she is this feared assassin. In exchange for her freedom, she's told she has to compete in this king's games. So while she is doing that, she actually starts to learn that magic has been banned in this world, and as she is learning all these things, so is the reader. I have really enjoyed watching how this series, its world, and its characters have grown. 
I love this series for that reason because in life you don't stay static. I know a lot of people don't like that growth, but I personally do. I love this book. Honestly, love it. Honestly, feel like I enjoy it enough to give it a five star on my own personal rating scale. There are some sex scenes included in this book, so just know that going in. But there are only two sex scenes. It's less than 20 pages of like a 700 page book, so it really isn't as much as I was expecting from kind of like the reactions people are giving. Yeah, they're quite graphic, so if that's something you don't like, be warned. If you want to know the exact pages they start on so that you can avoid those pages, I can tell you the page numbers down below if you really want to know that. We have a main character who has a large point of view of this book with a disability. A main character who we've had for a couple of books now was confirmed as bisexual. He very explicitly said, I like men, I like women, attraction is attraction. He does happen to be with a female character, but that does not make him any less bisexual. If you guys want to hear more of my thoughts on this, I was in that live show over on Allie's channel, which will be linked down below in case you guys want to hear me chat with other people that liked the book and just know more of my thoughts. Ooh, it's not even that many books, but they're heavy. These are the eight books that I read this month. Let me know if you guys have read any of them, what you thought of them down below, or what was your favorite read of September. If you have any questions about any of these books that I did not cover in these reviews today, don't hesitate to ask me down below, or if you just want to chat more about any specific thing, let me know down there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the comments. Bye! Book number two in the something, What what is this one? It's on the cover. There is a spider crawling down right in front of me, so hang on! Ah. Yes! Oh great, there's spider guts on my wall now. Oh, I left this off of my anticipated releases list! What? <laughs> Why?